Thank you. I'd like to um, thank the organizers for inviting me to speak. Uh, it's always a pleasure. And uh, moving on, these are my disclosures. Um, I've been given the task of discussing one of my favorite topics, which is the role of adjuvant therapy in kidney cancer. And uh, so I'm going to give a brief review of what's going on and what we see as coming in the future. So um, the current um, adjuvant trials uh, basically are listed here. And I'm going to just go through some of the slides fairly quickly. Um, if you attended ASCO this year, you heard Ari Beldegrun present the results of the ARISER trial, which was an antibody to carbonic anhydrase 9 that was infused on a weekly basis for six months and basically was powered to clear cell carcinoma. Um, and I mention this because those of you who are younger than age 30 that I saw in there may not know that 10 years ago when we were first talking about developing some of these trials that this was a very important backbone for all of the tyrosine kinase inhibitor trials. And it's easy to kind of look back now and say, oh gosh, I wish we'd done things different. Well, that's why we review these because each time we do a clinical trial, I think we get a little bit better at designing them. So moving on, um, this trial had a lot of the same risk categories that we've used for the tyrosine kinase um, trials. And there, I, I bring attention to the um, inclusion of a kind of a broad group of tumors, T1B and up, up to uh, node positive disease. So this study was unfortunately uh, not statistically significant um, and was a negative trial in essence, but I think we learned a lot from this. Um, the current adjuvant trials are mainly powered, to, or mainly um, VEGF TKI trials, and I was the study chair of the ASSURE trial, which is shown on this slide here which is a large trial of uh, over 1,900 patients that accrued very rapidly in the U.S. and Canada and include, it was powered to clear cell but also included non-clear cell histology and sought to answer the question of whether a year of sunitinib therapy or a year of serafinib therapy was superior to placebo and I mentioned that both arms are compared to placebo rather than to one another. Um, I'm going to go through these slides quickly because there's a lot of slides. The ESTREC trial is an industry trial that was also looking at this space. It was a 500 patient trial, um, did not include uh, T1B disease, and, um, but the rest of high grade disease, and looked at a year of sunitinib versus placebo. The SOURCE trial um, answered a somewhat different question and used a similar population of patients uh, to assure with uh, high risk and intermediate risk disease based on, uh, but used the Leibovitch uh, prognostic score as part of the stratification. And in this trial, patients received either a year of serafinib, three years of serafinib, or placebo. Um, and so it addresses an important duration question that some of the other trials don't address. And this one completed a accrual, I think, either late fall or early this year. Um, so that's something to look forward to as well. Um, the Something's wrong with the mouse here. Um, I'll move on. The PROTECT trial. Uh, the, the mouse isn't working, basically is the next trial, and that just finished um, accrual last uh, this summer, and what that did is address whether pazopinib in this space versus placebo was um, 
efficacious, and as I said, that completed accrual uh, just a couple of months ago. Uh, somebody needs to help with uh, moving the slide. Okay, here. Um, so here's the PROJECT uh, study design. And finally, the EVEREST trial is ongoing, and this is a trial addressing the use of mTOR inhibitors with the primary endpoint of recurrence-free survival. And this trial initially was somewhat slow to accrue, but accrual appears to be picking up and uh, is 551 out of the 1218 patients as of right now. Um, so what I want to use the rest of the talk is to address issues that I think matter for adjuvant therapy. And they're listed on this slide. And I want to just move on to some of the other slides. So one of these is the design and scan frequency. And you can see that one of the good things about these trial designs is that they're all fairly similar. So at the end of the day, we can go back and really look at this as a large database. Um, there are some subtle differences in scan frequency. Um, and the current uh, AUA and NCCN guidelines do not require scans behind, beyond five years. And so one question, I guess, is are we going to get the data in as quickly as we think uh, if people are forgetting to do scans on a yearly basis after year five. The um, other thing that I think is very important is the, is the dose duration in IV or oral formulation. And these are uh, the VEGF TKI trials ongoing. Um, and you can see that some of them are using full dose and some of them have been dose reduced. And I'll get back to that in a second. And Looking at the common adverse events, this slide is data that I have from Assure. You can see in the first uh, three columns here, compared to what's in the label for advanced disease for sunitinib and serafinib. And I just want to point out that there were some differences we saw in toxicity, predominantly in the skin toxicity and perhaps less in the hematologic. Um, and these changes. Um, I think affected tolerability of patients. So based on uh, what I'm going to show you on this slide, which was a 14.9 percent discontinuation to AEs, but also a 15 percent dropout for other reasons, which are mainly patient refusal, uh, we adjusted the dose of the ASSURE trial to start at a minus one dose level for both sunitinib and serafinib. And I, I meant to uh, yellow the uh, serafinib one there as well, but that was 400 milligrams daily, and the sunitinib was 37.5. If patients did not have a um, grade one toxicity, then they had a mandatory dose escalation at either cycle one or, I mean, after cycle one or cycle two. And the same was done for source and protect. So. I think that the modification did affect, uh, did improve retention and uh, uh, decreased dropout for the ASSURE trial, and, I, and communication tells me that the same was true for PROTECT and for SOURCE. Uh, so the strategy works, but the issue is really, do we use that dose? Is the adjuvant dose different from the advanced dose? Um, do we use all of these? lower grade tumors as well as the higher grade tumors, are these sorts of things ultimately going to affect um, the answers to these trials? And right now we have eight trials ongoing. The AGUO is basically a, a trial in China um, collecting some more data on serafinib. Um, but the other ones, uh, the other ongoing one is the ATLAS trial, which I think I, yeah, I did put in here, which is three years of axitinib. And these are some of the uh, proposed studies that we're doing on Assure with the uh, database. And what I want to mention with all these trials is this is a tremendous resource with which to, I think, pull the data and really, you know, both clinically and uh, correlatively look at things. So we have over 1,300 tumor blocks for Assure. Um, we have 16,000 blood samples at multiple time points, and we have 7,000 ur um, urine samples. So Anybody who's, uh, who wants to do correlative work in this um, can
can submit a pro proposal to ECOG, and I think that this is a nice database with which to validate studies. Um, this is what uh, Tim Eisen has reported so far in source, which is the identification of a uh, susceptibility uh, marker, uh, ZEB2, and that um, is in press. So Tim has a nice sample set as well. And uh, just in the last minute, I'd like to just address, since there are new agents available, mainly the checkpoint inhibitors um, and some other interesting small molecules, and we now have data from the uh, TCGA as well as from some of the other groups sequencing tumor, and we know that there are some interesting um, genes such as BAP1 and SETD2. Might these be things that we will be able to apply to this population in the future in future trial design? Um, we previously looked at immunotherapy trials. These are trials that were conducted uh, before the era of TKI. They were all negative trials, but it was a different era, and um, one provocative question is tumor was not present at the time of immunotherapy administration. So based on this and the PD-1 um, information that's available, we have uh, one approach is um, an approach that we've been developing at ECOG, which is looking at a neoadjuvant design of patients with uh, tumors greater than four centimeters who would be um, acceptable candidates to have core biopsies followed by adjuvant PD-1 therapy followed by nephrectomy and a control arm uh, in which patients have both core biopsies and if they have high enough risk disease are able to receive PD-1 afterwards. Um, and the purpose of this design would be to ask both address safety and tolerability in the perioperative setting, but also to learn some important control issues with core biopsies versus resection biopsies. Um, are they representative? And to have an internal control of non-treatment versus treatment. So this is uh, one approach that we've taken um, at ECOG. And another approach that we've been moving forward with ECOG is and, and hope to collaborate with the other cooperative groups in this is a phase three trial also using an anti-PD-1 approach in which we check, in, in which we um, address a question that appears to be uh, front and center, which is do you need to have tumor intact when you administer these agents to really get a good response? And so this is a trial design where patients would get both preoperative and postoperative PD-1 therapy, and the you know it would be either a placebo or an observation arm. And so, given the time constraints, um, I will end here and just say that we have some really large clinical data sets. We have a very large tissue repository, and I think there are some exciting new agents out there. And as you heard yesterday with the discussion of some of these new chromatin. Uh, modulating genes. There may be some glimmers uh, of ways that we can refine risk in renal cell and uh, direct that forward into new adjuvant trials. So I thank you for your attention.